materials you will need for this project are a simple design. Make sure you've divided your image by negative and positive space. Your final product will have only two values, a solid color, the positive space, and the corrugated pattern of the cardboard, the negative space. A design like this one with white, gray, and black will not work for this medium. You will also need some cardboard, X-Acto knives, a Sharpie, a ruler, and a cutting surface or cutting mat. You may need to cut pieces of cardboard to match the size of your design. Here is how to do that. Use a ruler to measure from one edge of the cardboard to your desired size on the ruler. Make a tick mark at that measurement. Then repeat this two to three times. Now you have tick marks as a guide to draw a straight vertical line. Repeat the process for the width measurement. Here my image is a square, so the measurement is the same. Now, draw your straight horizontal line. To cut accurately using a knife, Use your ruler and line it up with one of the lines you drew. Hold the ruler in place, but ensure that your fingers and thumb are out of the knife's path. Doing several lighter score marks is better, safer, and more accurate than a forceful cut. Make sure that you retract the blade when you're done so that it can't fall off the table and stab someone's foot. Here I'm drawing my design plans onto my cardboard using a Sharpie. If you like, you can shade your design to indicate positive or negative space. I'll be cutting away the plain cardboard areas with the knife. Using my large knife, I will begin cutting around the design I have drawn. I am only cutting one layer into the cardboard. I'm not cutting all the way through. Now, using the knife in a sideways lifting motion, I'm removing the top paper layer of the cardboard to expose the corrugations underneath. I will keep going until I've completed this for the whole cardboard block or plate. I'm going to try out four different designs, so I'll repeat the process three more times. I use Sharpie to draw, my knife to cut the top layer away, and the magic of television to speed through the process. And here are my four cardboard blocks, ready to print. Some things you'll need to print are your completed blocks, your registration template. I've traced around my blocks on a sheet of paper so that I can center them on the page when I print. You'll also need paper, ink, plexiglass, a brayer, and a spoon. Here I'm using a variegated ink mixing technique with pink and blue ink. It's actually called a rainbow roll technique. It's one of my favorites. 
Later on in the video, you will see how to set this up. I'll ink the block using my multicolored brayer. And then I'll place them on the registration template. Then I'll place my paper on top, lining the edges up with the registration template. And then I'll burnish it with a spoon for about 30 seconds or more. and then I'll carefully lift my paper up. Now I'm printing my next two blocks using red and light orange ink. I will put blobs of each color on the plexiglass close together. Then, using the brayer, I'll roll over the blobs repeatedly until they mix together. And now I'll do the same thing I did last time. Ink the plates, burnish, and repeat. This is a simple way to use cardboard to do block printing. Now I'll show you another option. You can glue cardboard and other materials onto a cardboard backing and then print it. You will need cardboard, Sharpie, exacto knives, scissors, white glue or Mod Podge, and a glue stick. I've drawn a puzzle like design onto this cardboard. Now I'm going to remove the top layer of cardboard, cut it apart and then reassemble the puzzle so that the corrugations are all going in different directions. Then I will see what other textural elements I can add in. I'm going to add in this rope and some fabric crochet elements later on. I'm using white glue to glue this down as flat as I can. If any element is too raised, it will make printing difficult. I'm now going to add in some crochet doilies. I'm cutting them in half and gluing them down with white glue. I'm now using Mod Podge to paint over the whole entire block. I'm doing this to add a bit of waterproofing and also some strength to it. 
I'll need to make sure I let this completely dry before printing. To print, I'll use a registration template the same size as the paper that I'm printing on. Like before, I have traced my block onto the registration template. I will need my completed block, nice and dry. Inks made especially for block printing. Butter knife to mix the ink, a brayer, spoon for burnishing, and now I've got a cup of water to thin any of the ink if I need to. A spray bottle also works to do this. I will mix the ink on my plexiglass. And now I will coat my block with a heavy coating of ink. Usually you need a lot more than with a linoleum block print. For printing process like this, people often use a printing press. If you're not going to use a printing press for this process, you're going to need to burnish like the Hulk, and you're going to need to burnish for a longer amount of time than you would for a lino block. Using a press will give you way more detail, but this way also works. And now I'll repeat these steps over and over. Ink, burnish, and repeat until I've pulled as many prints as I want. You may not be able to use your block again, depending on how the Mod Podge layer held up and what different elements you've included in your piece. But if you're really careful, you may be able to use your block over and over as well. I've now pulled three pretty consistent prints, so I'm going to addition them. I do have some smudges, but they're not super noticeable. In the bottom left corner of the print, I will write one out of three, or one over three. I will write the title in the middle and my signature on the right. I'll then repeat this process for all three prints. And that's the basics of a cardboard collagraph. I hope you learned something and enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching!